Hey everyone, welcome back to the Radical Care for Christians Counselors podcast and here I am, I am Bethany Boring, I am a certified mental health coach, certified abuse recovery, addiction recovery, mental health coach, also a certified think differently coach, but here's my passion. My passion, and this is why we do this podcast, is because my passion is to connect with Christian counselors, mental health professionals, pastoral care leaders, those who are so tired of doing constant in and day out one-on-one meetings, one-on-one sessions with people. In fact, I believe that God has called us to more And by doing that, that we can get over the isolation and overwhelm of doing the one-on-ones by the support of a group, but also by learning how to facilitate and counsel and coach a group well so we can do deep transformational work. So really, we get to impact many people. And so that's why we're here. If you want to care well for other people, whether it's in a group setting, which I hope it is, or even if it is one-on-one and you're just looking for a community of like-minded people who want to love God, but really love others well, this is what this is for. So welcome to the Radical Care for Christian Counselors podcast. I hope you're in the right place. And this is the first day of a new series, which I am calling Thrive because I'm learning as I talk about this to many other people, because I own Step Out and Thrive, people ask me, well, what does Thrive really mean? And I'm beginning to realize that my definition of Thrive and most others' definition of Thrive are not the same thing, like at all. And so what I thought we'd do with the next couple of weeks is we would take one letter at a time. And each week, there's going to be curious questions at the end, which if you're involved with the free community, the Step Out and Thrive community, you can go in there and we can tackle these questions together as you're doing your work. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and spoil it. The T out of Thrive means through. And you guys are like, Okay, that's epic. I know it through means, Bethany. Thank you for that. Let me dive a little deeper and let me start with a story because each podcast through this series, I want to start out with my story. I want to connect it to God's story. And I want to challenge you to find your story, to find your thriving story. So T means through. I want to take you back to a moment. It was a couple years ago. I was outside of the orthodontist pacing the sidewalk because I had just received a call just a few hours earlier from my medical staff saying, Bethany, because of everything that's going on, there's a really good chance that you are going to lose both your hearing and your vision at the same time. Now, most of you all know my story. I have CHARGE syndrome, was born with CHARGE syndrome. And so it involves a complexity of different things. First of all, with my vision, I have coloboma in both eyes. You can Google that, but it's a nutshell. It's basically when your eyes are not formed correctly or even all the way. And so my coloboma goes all the way back to the optical nerve, which means my vision is never perfect. It's always shaking. It's always grainy. I can't always tell depth perception. Sometimes I I get shadows. I'm pretty much blind in my left eye and my right eye, depending on how much I use it, it can be blind as well, depending on what all goes on. My ears, I was always deaf in my left ear. And you guys can see now I get to wear hearing aid in that ear because they were able to get some of the bone conduction working. And my right ear, there's a hole in the eardrum, but I'm profoundly deaf in my right ear as well. So pretty much deaf in my left ear, profoundly deaf in my right ear. And I have a short right arm, which most of you guys know of. It's called righty. <laughs> At least that's what it's called growing up. And I have a pacemaker. I have continual vertigo. I mean, there's so many things. And so you can Google charge syndrome if you want to learn more about it. But it is a complex, different way of doing life. And I'm learning the more I get to talk about it, the more people are interested. So with all that being said, I have a lot of different medical people that are involved in my life. And around this time, I started realizing that my vision and my hearing were both going down, which they told me could happen as I got older, but I didn't realize the severity until that day. And so what had happened is I had gotten this news. I had driven because, you know, you still drive. (laughs) I drove. I I do life like normal. And so I drove my kid to the orthodontist. It was just me and him. He was inside doing his appointment. I couldn't 
sit there because I had all this anxiety and it's almost like a knife was stabbing me in the stomach and I had to move. I'm highly ADD. <laughs> so when I move is when I do most of my processing. And so I was outside pacing the sidewalk while my kid was inside getting his braces taken off. It should have been the most exciting day of his life and I couldn't be with him for that moment because I was dealing with my own craziness. I found myself listening to a podcast by Kurt Thompson and it's called The Being Known Podcast. And on that specific day, him and Pepper were talking about a poem and it was talking about finding God, <laughs> finding God, finding God's beauty in the everyday. And I remember stopping and I said, I can't deal with this right now. God spoke very gently to me. He said, just stop. <clears throat> and I want you to decide at this moment, Bethany, if you're going to go through what I have planned for you. It begins by pushing play on the podcast. I dropped to my knees. And as far as I know, there was nobody out there watching this crazy girl on the sidewalk <laughs> at her knees. And I just curled myself into a little ball with my back against the brick of the orthodontist office. And I pushed play. And as I listened, tears started to fill my eyes. Because I listened to these words of beauty, whether it was talking about a raven flying through the air, whether it was talking about a rainbow, whether it was talking about looking at a smile. I had to make a decision that moment. Was I going to go through what God had planned for me? Or was I going to stuff it? Or was I going to run away? I wish at that moment I would have just totally made that decision that I'm going through no matter what. It wasn't quite like that, but I think deep down deep inside I realized, God, if I can see you, if I can see you in this moment right now, I know I can go through, but I have to see you. I have to be able to experience you. It has to be more than just knowledge. It has to be the way that I experience this world. Because if I'm sitting alone in silence in the dark all by myself, it won't be worth it. I can't do that. You know I can't do that. But if I can see you, and if I can hear you, and if I can experience you, that's the beginning of life, right? I sat there pleading silently to God. And as I looked up, I'll never forget this. As I looked up against the building, against the windows, I saw a rainbow reflecting. The colors were just amazing. And I lost it. <laughs> I completely lost it. Because it was from that day on that I started really looking and chasing for God in my everyday moments. Because I knew that could help me get through whatever it was that I was facing that day. That didn't mean I didn't have days in the future where I was curled up on the bathroom floor. That didn't mean I didn't have days where walking into a medical office seemed nearly impossible. That didn't mean that I didn't have days where I sat in front of my kids' homework and I couldn't read what was on the stinking page. That didn't mean I didn't have days where I was sitting in front of the hearing aid professional looking clueless because we're at the end of the rope as far as hearing aids go. Didn't mean that it was easy but it gave me what I needed to walk through with God. In the Bible, there's a story in the book of Joshua that is amazing about the Israelites, how they had to walk through. Now, if you know, you know enough of the story, right? Where they went through going through the Red Sea, right? You know that story about how the Israelites were running away from Pharaoh and then Moses held out a staff and the Red Sea parted and they walked through on dry land. I used to love that story. I still love that story, okay? That one is epic in my book. 
And then there was a story later on where they got actually almost into the promised land and Moses sent out spies and Joshua was one of them. And they all returned back with all these crazy stories about how big the people were and how scared the people were and how they couldn't walk through at that time because it seemed nearly impossible. They didn't see God in that moment except for Joshua and Caleb, right? And Josh and Caleb were like, let's go. God has already given us victory. And they were like, no. And then God said, because you all said no, I'm not going to let you go into this time. And I'm going to send you out later, 40 years, you're going to be wandering in the desert. And they're like, oh, just kidding, God, we'll do it now. And God wasn't with them because they didn't want to go through with him. And so here they are, 40 years later, they're at the edge of all of this happening. And what's separating them from the promised land is the Jordan River. Okay. You probably, maybe there were some kids, maybe in that time, I don't think there were really many that passed through and probably remember this whole Red Sea experience, but you know that they grew up every single day, almost repeating this amazing story about how God sent them through the Red Sea, right? So here they are. God has been doing amazing tabernacle things with them. They had the Ark of the Covenant. The priests are ahead of everybody. And God said, because we're going through with me, that I'm going to do something amazing in this moment. Because they didn't turn their backs. They learned and they were ready to go through. So I want you guys to picture this. If you're a priest, you're carrying the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, that you've seen the holy God of the universe dwell in this. You've seen amazing things happen. So you're carrying this Ark, this living, amazing God, literally circling circling amongst the camp. You are carrying this to the Jordan. And the Bible says, The second, the second the priest's sandals hit the water, the Jordan piled up. Now, here's the interesting part about that story. The text doesn't say, and as they looked at the Jordan, or as they almost touched the Jordan, it's as, as in being, they had to step out in faith and go through before God decided to do something at that moment. I wonder if coming from the Red Sea, when God was like, I am going to give you something to spread out and I'm going to show you how to work this out, right? I wonder if it's coming from that moment all the way to where they were today. Where he's like, no, 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 you've seen me. You've experienced me. I am dwelling among you. But show me that you really do want me as your God, because you're going to need me when you go and fight these battles. God didn't just say, here's the promised land. No, if you read the book of Joshua, you know, it's filled with tons and tons of battles and bloodshed. It's it's a hard book to read, honestly. My boys love it, (laughs) but it's a hard book to read. They had to do a bunch of battles. So as they're going and putting their feet into the water, letting God go first, having him dwell among them, they get to walk across on dry land, except for the priests, because the priest's feet are a little damp, right? Because the priest had to take that first step. God does the same with us, you all. (laughs) And our every day, part of thriving is it us. It's not about being stronger or having to figure it all out. Oh my goodness, thank you, (laughs) right? But it is about seeing God in your everyday, connecting with him and being willing to take that step, knowing that he's with you, not knowing how this is going to go, but knowing that he's called you that way, just taking it one step at a time. If you're anything like me, you're going, yeah, okay. Um, and you're tracking forward. This is how this is going to end. Well, this is gonna, how this is going to look like. And God's like, yeah, you don't know nothing. <laughs> in a nice way, because it's totally different. It's totally different. 
What's your story? What is your through story? When have you felt like you're on the brink of something that God's calling you to do, but you're going, I don't want to go through that. I don't want to fight those battles. I don't want to cross that Jordan River bank. I don't want to deal with vision loss and hearing loss. But God, but God, if you're with me, I can see this differently. I can hear this differently. I can go through. You can't go through any other way. You have to go through with him. But that is the first part of thriving. It's not about this. It is all about this, the relationship with God. Through, and the next word is gonna be him. Big surprise. So I spoiled it for next week, but through him. So, but today and this week, I want you to think of your through story. What is your through story? What is God having in your life right now? And everybody usually has this one thing, right? Everybody has this one thing where God's moving in a certain direction and you're like, <laughs> nope, not going to do that. Let's pretend like it's not happening. Let's go over here and watch some TV. Let's do some more work. Let's talk about this relationship. Let's do anything but the one thing that God is calling us to do. Yeah, I'm not guilty of that at all. Hello. Yes, I am. <laughs> done that too. Play the game. Been there, done that. But that's what makes thriving better because we are getting out of the surviving mode. Surviving mode. Oh, yes, I can go. Yep, yeah, I'm going to go through it. I can do it. It's up to me. Everything's up to me. I've got to make this happen. God never called us to do that. <laughs> God called us to go through with him. What is your through right now? And what is it going to take for you to take that next step? Maybe you like me. I just needed to see and hear God. I needed the permission to be angry, to be sad. I needed permission to not have this all thing figured out. I needed the permission to be real because the more real that I was able to become, the more real he became in my life. That was my through moment. What is your through moment? What do you need to ask God to do for you? What is it that you need to see happen? What is it that you need to forgive? What is it that you need to see? What is it that you need to experience? What is it that you need to read? Talk to him. The first part of thriving is through. So your assignment this week, find your through moment. What is that? Ask God what that moment is. God, what is the, what are you calling me through right now? And have that riverbank moment with him. I'm scared to cross this because I don't know what's on the other side. I'm scared to cross this because the last time I tried to do this, I got hurt. I'm scared to cross this because what about my kids? I'm scared to cross this because I don't know if I really trust you, God. Find your through story. Identify those things that are really heavy and just be real. Maybe invite some other people into that through moment with you. Maybe you just need permission to be real. We are in the community this week. You can visit it at bethanyboring.com. You can check out the free part. We would love to connect with you. I hope you hear my heart. I would love to connect with you in these through stories and these through moments. And I cannot wait to take these next couple weeks journey with you so excited that you're i don't think it's a mistake that you're listening right now and you know we're gonna go through these next couple weeks together you're not alone my friend dare to do more than just survive step out and thrive have a great week everybody bye